Hello viewers and welcome to Novice Talks with me your host Novice Gormius and this is part two of my video where I look back on everything I've uploaded last year in 2021. Uh, we're going to jump right into it because last video was way longer than I planned it to be so I apologize for that. Uh, but we left off talking about my review of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD and directly after that I had uploaded a video for the 35th anniversary of Metroid. So this was actually a TikTok I had done. Um, I wanted to do some sort of celebration for Metroid but I didn't know what I could do. I wanted to do something special but there was nothing on my disposal that I could do, you know, I didn't have the means to make music or make an animation or anything like that. So I wanted to do something in my own way and this TikTok I did, I put together a few days before I decided, you know what, it's better than nothing. Um, so that's what that was actually. And coming off of that, the sales potential and future of Metroid Dread pretty self-explanatory. This was me just talking about, you know, what Nintendo might do in terms of marketing Metroid Dread. The trailers we could get, when we could get them, what are types of marketing they might do. And talking about how that would lead to sales. And ultimately, if Metroid Dread could end up being the most successful Metroid game. We all had a hunch that it would be, but at the same time, you can never know for sure, so in that video it was just me spending the time wanting to go through that. Since we're in June, or July rather, and we're going up uh, the year now, you're going to see a lot of Metroid content because this was the year of Metroid, the 35th anniversary, and it had a bang, we had a lot to talk about. We got another trailer for Metroid Dread in July, this was trailer 2. Before this, we had gotten two small teasers. Uh, we had a glimpse of Dread and another glimpse of Dread. But this is the first proper trailer since E3. And this was the one where we finally saw Craig. This was the big, insane one. I remember recording this, my being blown away seeing the Chozo, who I think it's safe for me to say his name now, Ravenbeak, he's called Ravenbeak. It was so cool, you know, seeing him there in that armor and hoping he would talk, wondering if he would, and hearing him speak and losing my mind with that. And it was just a really well put together trailer, really fast. It showed you the intensity and some of the difficulty of the gameplay. Uh, teased a bit more of the story, obviously showing us that the Chozo are quite heavily involved in the story of Metroid Dread, and teasing us with some of Samus's new abilities that she's got going on. The, you see her hand glowing a few times and all the speculation we had around that. It was, I remember having a lot of fun with that. One of the things that stands out to me from my reaction to this trailer was the, um, Cray! When, obviously when he showed up. But I did prefer this over the E3 trailer, just because it gave us a bit more uh, in terms of the story. We were also getting Metroid Dread reports. Over on uh, the Metroid website, they were doing these reports, I believe every two weeks. At the same time as Trailer 2, we had gotten, um, looking at the thumbnail in my video, uh, the sixth Dread report. Uh, that thumbnail actually for this one, that's actually one, I really like that thumbnail. I was quite happy with how that turned out. Um, I don't know what you guys think of it. You can let me know down in the comment section below, but I quite liked what I did blackening the bottom, just the, the contrast and how well everything uh, was put together, you know. My thumbnails are usually hit and miss for me. Sometimes they turn out really great, better than I expected. Other times I'm really disappointed with them. Uh, but that was one I was quite happy with. This video probably seems out of place for you. Super Mario Galaxy 3. I think by now it's well known that I'm a big Super Mario Galaxy fan. Mario Galaxy is my favorite game of all time. I absolutely love it to death. This, I believe, was September because we were gearing up for another Nintendo Direct. We knew one was coming in the month of September, but we didn't know, but we presumed. Um, and I had a hunch. I was like, you know, we're going to see the new 3D Mario and it's going to be Mario Galaxy 3. I did specify in that video, look, 
there's a chance I'm wrong, we don't see the game, or we do and it's not Mario Galaxy. I'd still be hyped, but I would be disappointed. And that's because Miyamoto's quotes from 2015, yeah, it's like seven years ago or whatever, but he did say they want to do another Mario Galaxy. So maybe I took that uh, to heart a bit too much, but God, I really want another Mario Galaxy. Please, Nintendo, just one more. That would just... It would make me so happy. We haven't gotten Mario Galaxy 2 on Switch, so the chances of Super Mario Galaxy 3 on Switch right now kind of depends on if that comes, I think, but I still hold out hope that someday we will get Super Mario Galaxy 3. If it doesn't happen next gen, then I think at that point it will be safe to say that it's not happening, but the next few years, I think it's still on the cards. At that time then, I'd hit 200 subscribers. Not a big milestone, but it was something I was proud of. Uh, I'd been running this channel for three years at this point, and to finally hit 200 subscribers uh, felt nice. Right now, I'm at 237 subscribers, which, you know, again, in the grand scheme of things, that's absolutely nothing. Um, but to me, you know, that's cool. I like that. That to me feels like an achievement, feels like an accomplishment. The fact that I was able to even get that many of you. But, you know, lately my views have gotten... They've gotten a steady amount, I should say. In the past, they used to be, they used to be all over the place between one video might get five views, the next one might get a hundred. Lately, they've been at a very stable 20 to 30 views on average. Obviously, during this time period with Metroid Dread, they were going up quite a bit, and this was the time when my channel was starting to grow um, as a result of all this. But yeah, my no my average views are like 20 to 30, sometimes 40. And I've gone to accept that, and considering that's staying steady and balanced and that's average, I'm happy with that. For the numbers I have in terms of subscribers, I've got to accept that, I'm happy. Jumping back into Metroid Dread, because of course we are, this video is pretty much going to be entirely Metroid Dread. Um, I guess partly why I wanted to split this up in two parts, so I could give Metroid its own love. The overview trailer, this was the one with the narration, and I remember, like, I still don't know what to make of that narration. On the one hand, it's cool and it fits, on the other hand, it just, it's so awkward sounding. Uh, we had this like female voice and she's like talking about the Emmy and stuff and just her pronunciation of certain words and enemy names is just so strange. I think I preferred Trailer 2 because I wasn't as excited for this one as I was Trailer 2. I think because at that point they were starting to get a bit spoilerish and I'd seen basically enough. The only reason I was still watching these trailers and stuff is because I needed more Metroid content in my life. I was super excited. And the final marketing push for Dread? This was a bit like the previous marketing video I did. This one I was just talking about, we were only a few weeks away from Metroid Dread at this point. Oh well, about a month. And I think this was around the time when we started seeing posters appearing in train stations, appearing everywhere. You know? This was a time where we realized oh shit, they're really going all in with Metroid. Uh, we were seeing the marketing everywhere. They were constantly tweeting about it, acknowledging the 35th anniversary. We were getting dread reports every two weeks and number eight was really spoilerish. I didn't uh, look at it at the time because I knew I had a feeling when I was talking about the map areas would get spoilers, but I looked at it after I finished the game and good God, they spoiled almost every area in the game. Um, so they did start to get a quite a bit spoilerish with their marketing material and that's something I'm gonna to have to keep in mind for Metroid Prime 4. You know I don't feel like the game got spoiled for me or anything but it's something to keep in mind. Nintendo has a weird habit when it comes to their first party games of spoiling a lot of material lately. But funny enough what the video after was about as well. Community. You know I was feeling really because as you know as I keep saying all the time you know I was really emotional and happy and excited for this game and because I wanted to milk Metroid Dread for everything it was worth, I did a video just talking about what it felt like being a Metroid fan. 
where everyone was excited, everyone was in unanimous agreement that the game looked amazing. We were all super excited. It was everything all of us ever wanted from a Metroid game. And talking about that feeling of community, uh, of excitement, of uh, togetherness, it was a really special time. And uh, you know that that feeling is still in the air, but obviously it's kind of dialed back a bit now that the game is out and the excitement has died down. But by the end of this year, I'm sure it'll come back because they'll probably be marketing Metroid Prime 4 by the end of this year. And finally, moving on from Metroid. Bayonetta 3! Oh, we had a September Nintendo Direct, and for the first time in four fucking years, we finally saw Bayonetta 3. What a moment! Um, they kind of blue balled us. It starts off, it looks like the wonderful 101, then it looks like Astro Chain, and you see the uh, Lappy, who is a character I really hate, by the way, and then it turns out to be Bayonetta. I was half excited, half not, half not excited for this. Because it had been so long, my hype for Bayonetta had kind of died down. But at the same time, the game just didn't impress me. Visually, it looked great, but the gameplay looked really slow. Controlling the demons doesn't look fun. Um, this multiverse idea, it's not even the same Bayonetta. There's a different voice actress. All these little details added up that made me just go, yeah, this isn't the extremely exciting reveal I was hoping for. I was back in September, so maybe in the next Nintendo Direct or Addy 3 or something, whenever we see Bayonetta again, the next trailer will be more exciting, will give us more to actually sink our teeth into. Because I want to be really excited for Bayonetta 3. I want to love this game. I've been talking about it since 2018, but... It just doesn't seem to compare to Bayonetta 2 for me so far, and, you know, it was an early trailer, so maybe a later trailer will completely blow me away. That happens. <laughs> but, on the, while we're speaking of being blown away, for all the wrong reasons, uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie, I actually keep forgetting this is a thing sometimes. We, in that Nintendo Direct, we got information on the movie that it's coming out December of this year, which is weird to think about, and information on the cast, and it's one of the worst movie casts of like all time, and the movie is not being taken seriously. Some people were really excited for this. I was just left like gutted after this, hence the title. This ruined my childhood. This was kind of a clickbaity, but also semi-true. Because to me, you know, I was expecting is the Super Mario cartoons, the th all three of them, they were so accurate and faithful to Mario lore. Why is this completely missing the mark, you know? And it, they have a boss, it sounds like they're going to be in Brooklyn again. It sounds like it's going to be an origin story, so we're really just doing the live action Mario movie again. Well, I'm really just not happy about that. I will do a video in future talking about when we could see a trailer for that. Um, I get nervous even saying that because the thought of witnessing a trailer for this beautiful work of art um, <laughs> sinks my heart, we'll say. Also from that Nintendo Direct, we got a new Kirby game. People weren't wanting this for ages. There was talk about this for a few months and we finally got a trailer for one. The internet is really excited about it. I think it looks kind of crap. Visually, it looks like a 3DS game. It looks really poor. That could be early footage, and maybe, you know, a new trailer would look better, but what I saw didn't impress me. It didn't look that fun, but Kirby has a lot of fans. I'm sure it's going to be a really successful game, and hey, if any of you watching this are Kirby fans, I hope it turns out to be an awesome game for you, and I hope it's worth the wait. And that Nintendo Direct was the the gift that keeps on giving because just like the February Direct where we were getting all these crazy announcements, this September one kept giving us stuff as well. We finally got a trailer for the second DLC for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, Guardian of Remembrance. And I specifically remember this was supposed to come out on November 28th, but it came out like two weeks earlier, I believe. Uh, this trailer was really exciting. It looked like the story content I was looking for. It looked promising. D 
DLC came out. It was fun, it was enjoyable, but story content wasn't anything. It was just in between other missions in the story. The cutscenes didn't add anything. It wasn't a substantial expansion of the story that I expected. I expected new lore that might potentially hint at Breath of the Wild 2 or some sort of sequel to Age of Calamity, but no, it was all stuff that happens while the main game is happening and it was a fine DLC and because of that DLC I did play the game a lot and I finally got to 100% the entire game so I still got my um, money's worth I suppose for 20 euro. It's not bad but it's not great either. But I will say the base game, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, it is a fantastic game. Problems aside, it is one of the must-have Switch games, and especially if you're a Breath of the Wild fan, I highly recommend checking this game out. It's a lot better than the last Hyrule Warriors game. The last Hyrule Warriors game was pretty bad, admittedly, but this one plays more like Breath of the Wild, and that's kind of what makes it so fun. And also in that Nintendo Direct, we went back to Metroid, and th this was really weird. This was also something I was excited for, to have a Nintendo Direct where I hear them mention Metroid. I was waiting for this, and this Sounds of Dread teaser was really cool. It had this cool music that wasn't in the game, strangely enough, but the trailer itself, uh, this is where I started getting worried about spoilers. Uh, saw me just kind of blocking my eyes sometimes whenever I see certain enemies. They got kind of spoilers, and I remember shortly before this there was a teaser where we saw the ex-parasite in gameplay. And that was a big spoiler, because it confirmed, yeah, the X are in the game, it's not a conspiracy. They are actually alive. And that was a bummer. I wish I didn't see that. But that spoiler got leaked out, and it kind of ruined some of the mystery of this trailer, where they talk about, oh, is the X parasite alive? Yeah, because they spoiled it, I already knew. But regardless, that was a cool trailer, and, and I was just really happy to hear them mention Metroid in a direct and just to hear them say the words Metroid Dread again. Um, for the last time, I suppose, really. And then finally, we were in October. October the 8th. Uh, the day before I had uploaded my final thoughts before Metroid Dread. This was something I really wanted to do because this was a historical moment to me. As I keep repeating myself and rambling on, and I'm sure you're bored of me repeating myself so many times, the gravity of this moment, the fact that when I wake up in the morning I would be playing the game that I've been speculating about for 8 fucking years. It was huge and I spent those 13 minutes reminiscing on just where I'd come as a YouTuber and where my Metroid content had come and everything relating to Dread and all of that stuff. And then October 8th. The day finally came, I got my hands on Metroid 5. This uh, thumbnail I did was shortly afterwards when I was taking pictures for social media of the special edition I got, but the way I overlaid the images on top of my bed, I think that's actually a pretty cool thumbnail. I don't know if many of you would agree, but it sort of blends and adds depth to it. It's really interesting and almost abstract looking. Um, not to toot my own horn here, but sometimes some of, my, some of my own thumbnails impress me, to be honest. I recorded myself walking from the bus stop to GameStop, and then coming out of GameStop with the game, and how I felt in that moment, what it felt like holding the game, going into GameStop and seeing them hand it to me. What a moment. It is... A moment I will never forget for years to come. Something I will always cherish. And then, a few weeks later, I got to do my review. <laughs> Eight years in the making. Metroid Dread non-spoiler review. Um, I say it was almost a masterpiece because the game did so much right. It was such a phenomenal game. The only things that held it back were the story. I felt the story wasn't great and could have been a lot better and there were some sort of plot holes in there as well but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the game. Everything else in the game was so finely tuned and so so much attention and care put into it that it made up 
for the lack of storytelling. Um, so I was able to let that slide, whereas in most games, that would be a game breaker for me. With this game, it didn't bother me. I still think it's one of the best Metroid games, if not the best, and I'm going to be playing it for years to come. A few videos after that, talking about the lore. I was planning to do a lot more videos on this than I actually did. It's just that I had included them all together that I didn't feel like a need to drag it out any longer. It also felt like there wasn't much else outside of what I brought up in these few videos here. I also talked about the Mercury Steam controversy. So while Metroid Dread was selling incredibly well, shortly afterwards we got news reports of what happened to Mercury Steam during development. Employees were not credited on the game, uh, large amounts of content were cut from the game, and people weren't getting paid and were getting switched around. I commented in that video, I was like, it was unacceptable to be treating the employees this badly. And what amazed me is that the game had uh, over an hour of cutscenes deleted. There was so much missing content from the game, yet it doesn't feel like it. It feels like such a complete package. And that's even more mind-blowing to me now, now that Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach comes out. Because that's another game that's missing massive amounts of content. The difference between the two is that Security Breach feels completely broken and you can tell everything's missing. With Dread, they made up for all the missing content and filled in the gaps and so everything runs perfectly regardless. It also made me more appreciative of the fact that the game exists because it sounds like Metroid Dread could have gotten cancelled a third time. And if it did, I don't know if we would have ever seen it again. If they cancelled it a third time, I don't think they would ever have brought it back. But in the end, the game we got was fantastic. And the people that did work on it, all of them, even the ones that weren't credited, deserve all the praise in the world. Because regardless of the shitty business practices at Mercury Steam, the game is still a work of art. And those people deserve applause. I've been really rough on Mercury Steam since 2017 because I hated Samus Return so much, because I felt like they destroyed Metroid 2. I haven't given them a lot of credit, but with Dread, I have to I have to applaud them. What they delivered exceeded any possible expectations I could have had. Uh, I did a live stream, nothing really to talk about there. Uh, what was it? There was just something I was watching that night that just made me really want to do a live stream. So I decided, you know what, I'll flick the camera on, I'll do a live stream. I think I wanted to upload something, but I didn't have any content to talk about, so I did a live stream. And there was only two people watching it um, after about half an hour, but I somehow kept it going for an hour and a half, and it's since gotten 19 views since that uploaded. I will do another live stream sometime soon. I did say in my New Year's video I would do some, I would do one sometime in January, and I will. I will let you know about that one. I'll probably upload a YouTube short or something announcing that I'm doing a live stream. And we come to the end of the Metroid Dread saga for me. Uh, my final thoughts this was something I wanted to do. I did a video like this for Federation Force. I. I'm not sure if I did one for Sam's Returns, I don't think I did. Um, I did one for 3D All-Stars though. So I wanted to do one for Metroid Dread because, again, closing the book on that part of my life. Um, this was basically just, you know, I was repeating everything I said in my review and in my lore videos. I put a lot of care into that thumbnail as well. I really like the sort of purple of the nebula around ZDR and the, the Emmy in the background. Just a little cool little detail with that. I was really happy with how that turned out. Shortly after that, again, thank you Nintendo for Metroid Dread. This was another um, sort of TikTok kind of video I put together. I actually got inspired to do this partially because Shine Sparkers, the Metroid fan website, Shine Sparkers, they were putting together all these fan videos of people saying thank you and what they liked about the game. I was kind of already planning something like this or thinking about it myself, but when I saw Shine Sparkers were doing that, I decided, you know what, I'll do one myself. So I could have this as a sort of memento and something to look back on a few years from now. As for the video itself, it's basically just a recap of the journey. 
It's, it includes my reaction to the various trailers, some of my theories, my thoughts after the game came out, parts of my review, things like that. It's actually a video I'm really happy with. Unis Honest. Uh, yeah, one year. Literally one year. Um, I made a video before in the past. Unis Anus, for those of you who don't know, was a YouTube channel created by Markiplier and Crank Gameplays. It ran from the 14th of November 2019 to the 14th of November 2020. What it was, it was a YouTube channel that would upload content every day for a full year. And at the end of the year, they would delete the channel and everything. The whole purpose of this channel was that nothing lasts forever. You have to appreciate what you have while it's there and you gotta live every moment like there's no tomorrow. So the types of videos they did range from these sort of semi-philosophical kind of talks about death and uh, memories and to sort of outrageous comedic stuff and they did all sorts of challenges and different experiments with their videos and as far as YouTube content goes, it was my favourite YouTube channel. I think it's some of the best content to ever exist on YouTube and nothing like it will ever exist again. It is a work of art and I have a lot of respect for Mark and Ethan as artists because of this. Because they fulfilled their promise. They made all this content, they put in all of their work and they stuck to their work. They deleted this. In the end, they got rid of everything. That last one second on that live stream and they deleted the channel was really powerful. I can't really describe it to those of you who weren't there to experience this. Um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, but to those of you who have watched Unis Honest or were there for the end, you remember that was a powerful moment. I'm sure that like me, a lot of you just sat there afterwards and were just stunned. Um, I felt respect for Mark. I also felt you know, sad that it was over because it was my favorite channel, I was getting really into it, but it was crazy that it ended. And then uh, this video, basically, I wanted to acknowledge the one year anniversary. This was also the video where I set out a goal to upload 100 videos in 2022, because my Unis Anis video from 2019, or 2020 rather, I said I would upload 100 videos in 2021, which we just barely reached, by the way. This was the point where I was really trying from this video onwards is when you can you can tell I was really forcing videos out because I wanted to hit that goal. And thanks to Unis Anis, that goal, the number 100 doesn't mean anything. I could have picked two or 300 videos. I just picked 100 because that's manageable for me and meant I wouldn't have to upload every day. But you're gonna see um, that goal becomes a focus of my channel for the next month after this content is going to get a bit shallow from this point on. Admittedly, you know, not to talk bad about myself, but a lot of my content from here, it's not great, we'll put it that way. I finally had a reason to talk about Transformers Rise of the Beasts. This was big because this is the first time I talked about it since like March, February. I had not commented on any of the filming while this was going on. I know this might seem strange, but while the filming was going on, all the news we had about characters, actors, all this sort of thing, you know, I didn't make a video on any of it. Partially because I was excited, I wasn't excited at the same time. I just wasn't really that into it. Um, and I have my doubts about the movie, even though I am excited for it. But the delay, with the delay, I felt, you know what, I have to talk about this movie eventually. It's weird that I haven't. And that's that was brought up in the live stream. Someone asked me why I hadn't talked about Transformers Rise of the Beasts at all. Especially since anyone who knows me from my last channel, I talked about like every detail about Transformers the last night. Every trailer and every poster, I milked that movie for what it was. And I did a similar thing for Transformers Bumblebee, so it's weird that I did nothing at all for Rise of the Beasts. The interest was kind of lacking because the last two Transformers movies, Bumblebee and The Last Night, have been terrible. They haven't given me a lot to get excited or a reason to care. But the movie got delayed from June 2022 to June 2023. Bit upset about that. Um, I theorized in this video that it was because of Paramount Plus, their streaming service, and because Hasbro's contract with Paramount 
ends this year, this month actually, I believe. Um, so unless it renews, I don't know the future of the Transformers movies. Moving on from that, back into the world of video games. The Game Awards. We were coming up on the Game Awards finally, so it was time for nominations. And I think this was my first YouTube short. Yeah, this is my first YouTube short. Uh, I think it was late at night, I wanted to get it up before midnight, so... Because at this point I was trying to upload a video every single day. So... I want to talk about the Game Awards nominations. I didn't have a lot to say about them because I didn't play a lot of those games. But I figured a YouTube short would be the best way to do it. And at the same time, I... Metro Dread Amiibo, yeah. I, I was going to have it on the desk here for this video, but I actually completely forgot about it. I had ordered it. In Europe, we had a delay, so instead of getting it on October 8th with the game, we had to wait until November. Um, so I was kind of eagerly anticipating that, but I did finally get it in the end, went up to GameStop. Got it, that was a lot of... That was exciting to be going back up there and it's like, hey, one last time going in here uh, with Metroid Dread on my mind. So, um, yeah, the, the sort of icing on the cake of the Metroid experience. I haven't opened it yet, by the way. I want to, but I'm afraid of... I don't want to rip the box. So if I do open it, it's going to be with, like, surgical precision. Slenderman. Um, yeah, as you know, or as you may know, I am a Slenderman fan. My second video on this channel was a review of the Slenderman movie. A while after that, there's a, a video on the all the deleted scenes from the Slenderman script. I did some stuff on, like... Marble Hornets or something, or ranking Slenderman powers, whatever, and the video game. I'm a Slender fan, right? On Halloween, I played um, Slender the Arrival with my friend. We normally do, it's sort of a weird Halloween tradition, and uh, the topic of Slender the Arrival and why we never got a sequel was on my mind. And I did some research, I came across that on Reddit, and I made a video of it, because it gave me an excuse to talk about Slender again. Because he never gets content, I never really get to talk about him, so... I'd love to make a load of videos on Slenderman, but... There's just no content to talk about. But in this, you know, I looked at some of the... Posts and comments from, um... Parsec Productions and Blue Eye in the past about... Slender the Arrival getting a sequel. Parsec had said that, uh, apparently Slender the Arrival went into some development trouble. There was a lot of copyright issues, um, probably money issues as well, so he never wants to be involved with that again. And I guess his involvement is necessary for a Slenderman game, since we have never gotten one since. Uh, because Blue Wild, they're always posting with Slender the Arrival. They're always posting with Slender the Arrival, so obviously they're really into it and would probably love to make a sequel. But I reckon it's they would need Parsec's go ahead to do that because it's based on his game and his engine and stuff. I don't know, but he's the reason why we didn't get a Slender the Arrival sequel and probably why we never will, which is sad, but um, maybe we can still get some other form of Slenderman content someday in the future if we're lucky. Fingers crossed, touch wood, you never know. Self-explanatory title. The Game & Watch I got on the same day as the Amiibo. I was really excited for this. When I bought the Mario Game & Watch, I loved it. I was obsessed with it. I started looking into like the history of Game & Watches, wanting to track down some of the older models as well. Um, I loved it, had a lot of fun with this. I wanted a Zelda one. I believed if there was going to be an anniversary that there was a chance we could see a Zelda Game & Watch. We didn't get an anniversary, but we did get the Game & Watch. Um, and it gives me hope that, why stop here? Why not make more Game & Watches for other franchises? Metroid, Donkey Kong, Kirby, I don't know, just do anything. This Game & Watch apparently, has, I still haven't unboxed it by the way. Because I'm still going through a backlog of games before I um, get around to that. But, there apparently are some differences and there's some extra buttons on it. So, it shows Nintendo is willing to alter the base design for this replica Game & Watch for uh, future editions. So if they do make a Metroid 1 or a Kirby or Donkey Kong or whatever, 
it won't have to be impossible because they can add or subtract buttons as they need without changing the overall layout of that original model. So it's a neat little tradition. It's the first time they've ever acknowledged the Game & Watch since its release. Yes, they've released collections for the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, the DS and the 3DS and the Wii U. And yeah, uh, Game & Watch has a stage in Smash Bros, but this is the first time they've actually acknowledged the system itself since like 1980. So that's why it's really cool to me and it's a system I'm sure very few people have ever even heard of um, because of how obscure it is and because of historic uh, value to it. I just think it's really cool that the Game & Watch is a relevant thing again? Maybe not the right word, but is in the conversation again. So before I talk about these next two videos, the thumbnails, the, I, I really wanted to change the thumbnail on this one, the list of goals in my self video. But um, I couldn't come up with anything better. My creativity was dry that day, so I had to stick with it. I, I typically try to avoid having thumbnails with the same color twice in a row because it looks messy. And some of my uh, Metroid videos um, from July have that as well. It just it doesn't look good to me. It looks cluttered. Um, so I, I typically try to avoid that, but in this case I didn't. So yeah, this video, a little scroll to myself, uh, again going back to Unisanus, wanting to upload 100 videos in 2022, um, I made a list of things, I wrote them down, if you want to know what they are, go check that video out, listen, it only got 8 views, okay, give me a break, go check that video out, thanks, but yeah, following that up, the future of Metroid, um, I think I made this before yeah, I did. I made this before we heard the news from Mercury Steam about them moving on. But this is just me. The thumbnail, it's one of those thumbnails that is self-explanatory. I believe that we could be getting Metroid games every year, four year going forward, at least until the end of the Switch's life and the beginning of the next gen system. Um, of course, all of that depends on the Metroid Prime Trilogy coming this year. If that doesn't happen, then, then we're not getting yearly releases. Because Metroid Prime 4 most likely will be next year. Uh, maybe they'll take a break and they'll release... They might take a two year break or something and then release Prime 5 afterwards. I don't know. Some of the news we got afterwards really threw my um, theory. Um, flipped it upside down a bit. Flipped it upside down a bit. And the fact that we didn't get Metroid Prime Trilogy the Game Awards means I'm unsure of whether or not it, we're going to get annual releases for the next few years or not. We could, I did mention in this video as well, that we could get uh, the Metroid Prime Trilogy in LCD 3 Probably. I highly doubt it will be in a Nintendo Direct. I think they'll wait till June and they'll release in August or maybe even October or November again. Paramount Picture about to go bankrupt. Yes, yes they are. I was looking at their track record of all of their movies in like the last five years um, because people kept telling me they were going bankrupt and Googling it, yeah, is it Paramounts are, uh, they're in serious trouble. It's sad because they're such a historic studio. Uh, they're one of the oldest in Hollywood and to see them shut down would be tragic in a way, but and it seems like they're really on their last legs here. They need something big to turn things around for them, and uh, I don't know if they can if they can do that. Uh, again, self-explanatory. Will we see Breath of the Wild 2 at the Game Awards? We didn't, which I might say, I did say that. I was one of the few people on YouTube that was saying we wouldn't see Breath of the Wild at the Game Awards. I held to my guns that the game was, we just got in the trailer at E3 and he, Bill Trent said we'd see about, we'd hear it next year. So yeah, I was right about that. Why you should buy this book? Again, another YouTube short talking about the Iwata Asks book. I did a review of that later on, so I'll talk about that when I get to that one. Uh, another nonsensical uh, YouTube short, not much to say there. Bayonet at the Game Awards. I'm really disappointed that we didn't see Bayonetta at the Game Awards. 
This was our last chance. It comes out this year, unless it gets delayed to this year. Unless it gets delayed to next year, this was the last chance to see that the Game Awards. Yeah, it's nothing special. People keep saying there's nothing special about the Game Awards. They didn't have to. Yeah, but it would have been nice to follow up on that original announcement from four years ago. But regardless, next time we see the game, I don't know. It's not an easy game to predict, so there's not a lot I can say about that. For Prime 4, we didn't see that either. We didn't even get Metroid Dread DLC, which I commented on here as well. Uh, nor did we see Pokemon Legends. Uh, just talking about my uh, receipts in the game. So yeah, um, Mercury Steam and Metroid 6. Mercury Steam are apparently developing an RPG now. So that means they're not developing Metroid 6 unless they're developing it in conjunction. So that means we could be waiting another 5 to 10 years for another 2D Metroid game. Unless Nintendo gets another studio because of how Mercury handles Metroid Dread and all the development issues there. I don't know. But yeah, I am worried that we could be waiting a long time for Metroid 6. I really don't want to wait another 15 years. But Metroid Dread just came out, so there's no point in really talking about it just yet. We can we can have a serious discussion on Metroid 6 after Metroid Prime 4. Game Awards predictions, yeah, I talked about all Nintendo games, none of them showed up. Metroid Dread winning Best Action Adventure, that was a huge moment. I was shocked that that happened. I didn't think it would win any award. Well, we didn't get Game of the Year, but we did get Best Action Adventure, so that was really exciting. Uh, Halo TV series looked really cool. The show was apparently not canon, so that's kind of killed my hype for it, unfortunately. Saw 10, my second video on Saw 10 this year, or uh, I guess 2021. Uh, Josh Stolberg had tweeted that he's writing a script for the next Saw movie. Don't know anything about it other than it's going to focus more on John Kramer. So they seem to be taking on some of the criticisms from Spyro from the Book of Saw. So that's good. As more information comes out, we'll obviously talk about it. The end of a journey. Again, just a comment. I love this thumbnail. I really wanted the Metroid logo to be transparent, but I had a lot of difficulty editing that, so I couldn't. But you still get the point. Me and Samus back to back. Which is a cool thumbnail, but that video mostly just me, I think, talking about or being confused, thinking out loud about, you know, what's next for Metroid? You know, what do I do as a content creator now that Metroid Dread and Prime 4 are not a part of the conversation anymore? Um, so just more reflection stuff. I was shocked this YouTube short got over a thousand views. I actually changed the title on this and maybe the title affected that, but 1,232 views? That's ridiculous for me. It's not even a good YouTube short, but somehow that happened and hey, I'm not complaining. I always love it when my videos get over a thousand views, the odd time. Uh, TikTok review, uh, video. Ask you what a book review. You've probably seen the videos on YouTube reviewing the book. I've said the same thing. It offers some great insight into who Iwata was as a person and his philosophies on life and his approach to work in Nintendo. So uh, I highly recommend checking out the book or watching some of the reviews on YouTube if you're interested in that. FNAF Security Breach Review. The game fucking sucks. Okay, it was supposed to be the best FNAF game. FNAF VR was incredible, but then we get this half broken mess that's missing all of the content from the trailers and every day I keep seeing stuff that people are finding in the source code of missing dialogue and cutscenes and stuff and I don't know what to make of it. Steel Wool really fucked up this game and the Five Nights at Freddy's lore with it so all that hype, those trailer reactions and stuff, it was meaningless. None of it was in the game in the end. Uh, these are all just junk. Really, I was trying to fill out the the hundred videos thing. The drone video, though, I actually quite like this one. Testing my drone out, I the compilation I put together, I quite like the transitions and how nice it turned out. And I don't know, 
I might actually upload more footage in future if I get any interesting footage that I want to piece together because that's like the only YouTube short I've uploaded that I actually think I'm quite happy with. I uploaded another TikTok video, got five views. It, a few days ago, it had like zero views, so it's good to see that come up. And yeah, we're finally at the end here. These last three videos, just me talking about 2021 and here we are in the new year. So yeah, Jesus, this video is almost an hour long, but we finally made it. Um, looking back, 2021 was, it was a packed year in terms of content for me, uh, dominated entirely by Metroid for the most part. Um, Saw came into play um, at the start of the year, but it really took over from June onwards with Metroid and uh, Nintendo and just everything going on with the Game Awards and stuff. But overall, I am happy with my output this uh, this past year. I'm proud of myself that I reached my 100 video goal, and you know. Maybe I sh it was probably ridiculous of me to set a 100 videos goal for this year again. And I'm already worried about whether or not I'll hit it, but we'll worry about that over the next few months. Um, overall, I'm looking forward to 2022, all the future videos coming up with you guys. And I hope a lot of you stick around and like and follow and engage in some of the ongoing discussions we'll have. But I'm going to leave it there. If you've watched it this far, fair play to you. This was probably really boring, I apologize, but I wanted to do this reflection video looking back on the last year. Because I did it for 2020, but I was more efficient with that video it seems, because that was only one 20 minute long video. Anyways, thank you all for watching and please subscribe. Nova Scorvius out!